Hello, today I thought I'd show you how to mark um, an edge of a quilt to do a scalloped edge when you do the binding. So when you're doing something like that you actually pretty much make up the quilt and you quilt it before you do that bind, bound edge but you kind of need to know before you do the quilting at least that you're going to do the scalloped edge. So to that end I'm going to show you I've done a small table runner here and with the, the little scalloped edge and this one has got these little points in the corners, if you'll notice, partly because I thought it was cute, partly because that's what fitted on the table runner. And then there's a quilt that I've got here, which is a little bit larger, which is more like a lap size quilt, which I've done a scalloped edge here. And this one has got these rounded, much bigger scallops and rounded um, edges right round the corner rather than coming to sort of more of a point. Like, we, like we've got here. So that's that's really a choice thing that you can decide before you mark your quilt whether you want those points or whether you want the rounded ends. And then, so I'll show you how to do the marking. So what I've got here is a quilt top, again a lap quilt, that I want to do the scalloped edging on. And so when I worked out for this quilt here, I've got four scallops. So I've got this one, two, three, four, coming around the corners. And this quilt that I'm doing now is a slightly different size. It's just ever so slightly larger. But I thought it would be quite nice to have the five because you mark things a little bit differently, but it's a very similar process. So I've already started marking, as you can maybe see, I've got some lines coming along that I've drawn on the edge of my quilt. So this is the stage when you would mark your quilt. Um, it isn't impossible to do it later if you suddenly decide after you've quilted it that you want to scallop a quilt, but it's easier if you mark it now. So there are various tools and things around that will help us. You don't have to do all the maths and you don't have to use your dinner plate, although of course if you want to use a dinner plate for your little rounded edge, you can do that. Um, somebody sent me this template, which has proved to be a very nice template to use. Thank you, Terry. And so I've worked out how to use this template to do the scalloped edge marking. So this template's quite useful. Um, I'll just mention that it's got this top edge here which will give you the, the a sort of a shape you might want if you were going to do an applique vine or something like that. And then this bottom edge, which is cut out as a curve here, um, will help you mark out to do some scallops. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Uh, there are a couple of other tools and things around. There's one in particular that I know about because I have one, um, which is a, a scalloping marking tool and this has got adjustable scallops and um, there's like a little a uh, little bit here a tab that that fits in here so if I wanted an 11 inch scallop I would pop my tab in my 11 inch and that's going to give me a distance around of the 11 inches and things but I'm mostly going to show you with the other template today but I'll pop back and just show you how this one would sit in the same situation so if we're going to use a template like this what it suggests that you do is you have know your measurement of your quilt and because my quilt is square all my four sides will be the same which is always a, a bonus um, but you can always adjust scallops are quite forgiving if you need to adjust a little bit to allow for a longer side that a, a, the same size scallop doesn't exactly fit you can adjust them a little bit um, without it being any sort of a problem um, so my quilt measures 42 inches it suggests that you take four inches off that measurement and that, which will then become 38 inches and then you need to divide that number that's the number you're working with for your scallops you need to divide that by the number of scallops that you would like along that edge well I've decided I'd like five along that edge nothing actually divides easily into 38 so you can't kind of just decide it's you know, like 36 inches divided by nine goes four so you could have four scallops of nine inches for example we've got 38 inches so we need to come up with a different number, but I had already decided I'd like to have five and I will try and work out what that measurement is. So if you divide 38 by five, I don't know the exact figure, it's somewhere in the region of seven and three quarters, which works for me and works for the template. So I'm going to go with seven and three quarters um, for the size of my scallop and there's five of them along the side. So with the template, it's a, it's a good idea to make a mark. So on this template here, it's kind of got a central marking here at zero, and then it comes out, and these little 
markings and things, they, they're a little bit closer together than regular inches, but it works. So if you mark, maybe with some tape, you can get some like see-through tape or something. I've got a little roll of washi tape here. I'm going to mark at my seven and three quarters, so it's coming outwards, and it's in little quarter indentations. They're not an exact inch measurement, but they work for the inches. So I'm going to make a little marker with some of this tape at the size that I want so that I don't get confused when I'm marking. It's easy to see what I'm up to for both me and you. So I'll just pop a bit on and then I can show you again. What I'm up to. Some scissors. A little bit of tape here. And I'm going to take it out to the seven and three quarters. So I'm putting the sticky tape just to the outside edge of that seven and three quarters. Can you see that? So I've now got seven and three quarters showing between my two tape markers. So it, because I'm going to have five scallops along my side, that means that the, the central one is going to actually be on the rounded edge rather than on one of the V's coming out. So along the side of your quilt, you need to mark your centre point. Now I've just been using one of my mechanical pencils to mark all this. This line that we're going to be drawing will actually be a cut line. It won't be a sewn line. You won't see it. It's a cutting line. So you're not going to see whatever you use. You can use a pencil or a pen or something um, because it won't be seen. So I've marked my centre point here and I'm going to lay my template on there with the zero over that line. Now they've suggested that you line up with this line on, on the template here and I've decided that I didn't really have as much border as, um, as I'd like left if I lined up there because it, it cut in quite a bit. So I'm going to line up to one of the other markings down the side of the template here. So like half an inch down. So again I'm going to pop some of this tape right the way along there so that I know where to line my template up to. And this tape just peels off really easily. It's a little paper washi tape, but you can get other nice little see-through quilting type tapes that really help with this sort of thing. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my scallop to the seven and three quarter, and this is my central line that I'm using now, and I'm lining the edge of my quilt up with the inside of that yellow line along there. So if I lay this on here now, with the edge of my quilt to that yellow line, with that zero mark on that marking that I made at the center of, of the border of my quilt, and then I'm just going to draw from that line round to that line. Now that's pretty scary with a pencil on a nice piece of white cloth, but it works. So that's my first scallop marked in the middle of the side of my quilt. So then I want to mark the next one. I just come along here, reposition the edge of my quilt along that yellow line, find that little point there at the seven and three quarters, making sure everything's sitting nice and straight. And again, I mark the second scallop. Oh, this is good. And coming out towards a corner, and we're going to meet up here with the mark that I did on the, the previous side as well and I'll just show you how that works because things not everything works exactly so I'm going to again mark sorry line up my edge with that yellow line there I've got my marking lined up here it doesn't quite meet up here but it's so close like a quarter of an inch or so I'm just going to round that edge and then come on round here by the time you've quilted this and you're putting your binding on that will just round in nicely on that point. So you might have a little bit of fudging to do or a little bit of adjusting, but there's nearly always some way you can adjust. If you found that you had to have one scallop because it was like another inch difference or something, you could easily add in half an inch into your central scallop or again another little bit on the corner if you need to adjust a little bit because measurements are not working easily for you. So I'll just keep going along to the other end here so that you can see that the system really does work at both ends. So we started from the middle, I'm lining up along the edge with my yellow line there, I've got my marker here and I'm going to come along to that yellow line there. 
and I'm going to do the same here. Now I haven't got another line to, to meet up with at this stage on this end, so again I'm lining up my edge, lining up my yellow marking point, and this one actually works quite well. So quilts obviously vary slightly, even mine. And then I'll come along this side here, and then I'll have marked all the way around because I've already actually done two sides. So the same thing, you start always in, in the middle because we're doing it this way and we want that curve, one of the scallops over the middle of the side. So I've already marked my center line, this is the center of my border from the sides. Line up my edge with my yellow line, line up my zero point with my little marker, and again, draw my lines. So you can see that it's not too bad. So if you've got a quilt that's got different size sides, like a longer quilt, a rectangular quilt basically, like so many quilts are, you need to be able to come up with a measurement that works for both sides. But as I said, you can always adjust in a couple of the scallops if you need to without it really being a problem. Or put in a nice little point, um, like, like I've done this little point on the corner here, but you could, ha could have some sort of a little point somewhere in the middle if you wanted to adjust things like that. So there's a little bit of room to move, a little bit of creativity available to you. Now I'm back on this corner again, so I'm, I've lined up my edge, I'm lining up with my marker here, and again I've just out that little tiny bit on the corner, but to me that will just round itself nicely when it comes to binding it. And I'll just come out to this other corner here. So not too painful. So you need the, the length of your quilt, take away four inches, the length of the side of your quilt that you're going to scallop, take away four inches and divide that remaining number by the number of scallops that you would like to put in and then come up with the measurement. Now I'll just quickly do this last one and I'll mention the other template again because that one will take you to bigger scallops. If you were making a bigger quilt, look at that, beautifully fitting. So this has got two different options on this template. This is for generally smaller scallops and they're slightly more rounded than a larger scallop is. But if I put this one to the same size, if I pop this little notch here into the seven and three quarter inch, you'll see that on mine it's the same size scallop in essence, but the shape is slightly different. So you would want to use one template or the other because you would have that variation. The other thing to use a template like this or possibly your dinner plate or something that perhaps you've made some marks on again the washi tape would work on a dinner plate um, you would need to measure this distance so in each time so that you you didn't start having your scallops coming into a point over here you would need them to come to the same distance in from the edge each time so that's just a little thing to be aware of if you've got a template like that that you would like to use but, but also, I should just mention, this template goes up to much larger scallops so that if you were doing a large quilt and you wanted something up to a 12 inch size scallop, that will do that for you, where this template goes up to about a 9 inch. So a 9 inch is the one that I've done on this quilt, which is rather delicious. Um, and I'm doing 7 and 3 quarter inch on this quilt, which is hopefully going to be equally delicious. And um, so I'll I'll go away and get that quilted and I'll be back shortly and I'll show you how we're going to cut that so that we've got it prepared for binding. So I've been busy busy quilting my quilt and I'm pretty pleased with it just as well because the quilting's in it now. So I'm just going to show you, if you remember we marked all the lines where I wanted the scallops to go and that was with this template that I was using. And so you can see that everything's still sitting pretty much as it was with the template and really all it takes now is a pair of scissors to just quickly cut around on that drawn line that we've done and you're going to cut through your quilting because you've quilted a little bit past that line as well just a touch um, and then if we cut around there because it's all quilted it's all going to hold together nicely and then we'll be ready to put the binding on when we've made the binding and it's going to be a bias binding but I'm going to show you that in a separate um, quilting tips and techniques video. So you can see just with a nice pair of sharp scissors that we're just going to cut 
all the way around on that drawn line that we marked our quilt with before we did the quilting. So we'll do the bias binding and how to put it on in a later video. Thank you.